So the Artistic Award um, today um, will be presented by Conrad Bodman. Conrad's recently joined uh, the British Library and he's responsible for the exhibitions and events program uh, here. He is formerly head of interpretation at the BFI uh, and in charge of the National Film, Television Archive and BFI Publishing. And say so we've been following Conrad um, probably since 2002 um, uh, uh, when he curated uh, Game On, uh, it's the first museum exhibition in the UK to explore video game design. And we noted uh, in 2012 with Game Masters um, uh, looking at contribution of um, some of the world's most uh, influential game designers. Um, he's done some great stuff. We're delighted to have him here and we're even more delighted that he's able to hand out um, uh, this award uh, today. Conrad. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Nice, nice to be here. Yeah. Um, well, I'm head of culture programs at the British Library, so I'm really responsible for the um, exhibitions and events. So if you have time today, please go and see our Anglo-Saxons exhibition, uh, which is doing uh, really well at the moment, well-reviewed. And um, my team program all the events in this space, of which we do many, many, around 300 a year. So if you're interested, please come and join us. So this is the, um, this is the uh, BL uh, Labs Artistic Award, which recognizes outstanding and innovative work that's been carried out using the British Library's digital collections and data for an artistic or creative endeavor, which inspires, stimulates, amazes, and provokes. We've had 12 very diverse um, entries into this category, some of which were also submitted in other categories. Um, and I'm gonna highlight four of these, but wanted to thank everybody that had um, submitted. So this is a, an, another entry from the sampler team. Um, they had an entry in the research category earlier. Um, and they are Martin Harris, um, Del Zhang, Mark Levine, and Dan Levine, um, who are all at Birkbeck, um, the University of London. So this is a, a holographic projector, which displays um, interactive 3D scanned heritage items in a museum or other display setting. Physical objects from the British Library's collection rendered with Sketchfab are activated through voice commands and hand gestures, and then the display reads out the descriptions of the objects. The next uh, project I'd like to mention is Nomad, um, which is an HLF-funded collaborative project by Abira Hussein and Nemesin, exploring the creative use of immersive and web-based technology to contextualize archival Somali objects with the people and traditions to which they belong. Um, it was launched during the Somali Week Festival in October and, inc and includes a mixed reality experience combining sounds from the British Library's John Lowe collection, digitized objects from the British Museum and the Powell Cotton Museum, and a life-size holographic family which inhabit the user's real-life environment. Um, and this, this piece is called The Politics of Listening. Um, it's an oral work by the independent artist and researcher Freya Johnson-Ross, um, and it's a mix of sound recordings and oral recordings taken from the British Library's sound archive, which, as you probably know, is very extensive. The 25-minute piece encourages the listener to think about the politics of listening, who and what is listened to, recorded and heard, and how, when, and by whom can these recordings be used, and to what end. The next project is Another Intelligence Sings by Amanda Baum, Rose Leahy, and Rob Walker. It's, immerse, it's an immersive sound and art installation which uses artificial intelligence to transform environment, uh, environmental sound recordings from the BL Sound Archive. It invites the user to experience the sounds of our biological world rec recounted through an AI using sound recordings, including those from our own collections. <clears throat> a non-human uh, reading of the da data emerges and offers an alternative composition of Earth's songs and an expanded view of what might be perceived of as intelligent. So, <clears throat> now's the important bit. Um, so, um, this year's entries um, for this category have you know, been, been a really nice variety of different projects, and um, I think the panel were really pleased with the, the diversity and range that we'd received this year, so thank you all for that. Um, firstly, I'd like to announce the runner-up. Um, and I think the panel were incredibly pleased with this project and, um, you know, delighted with it. Um, and I'd like the, uh, the winners to come up and join me. Um, and they are Nomad. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we're delighted to accept this award as runner-up in the artistic category. Um, we'd like to initially thank 
um, staff at the British Museum, Dan, Jennifer um, and Kate McSweeney, Laura Phillips, um, who were involved in the initial project that allowed these objects to be digitised, uh, Mahendra and Janet from the BL who helped us to get the collections, and John Lowe um, for giving us a licence to use these uh, sounds. Um, so our project is centred around touring workshops, and since premiering here at the British Library during Somali Week Festival in October, it has travelled to different Somali communities across London. Um, and so Nomad includes a mixed reality experience for the Microsoft HoloLens, which reconnects tangible and intangible heritage. Um, when, when wearing the headset, the user encountered digitised objects from the British Museum, the Powell Cotton Museum and sounds from the John Lowe Collection held here at the British Library's World and Traditional Music Archive. These are all experienced within the context of a nomadic Somali family inhabiting the user's real life environment. People attending the workshops are invited to try the mixed reality experience. Um, and we also are uh, looking to engage um, with digitized heritage objects and sound in other ways, such as through web-based augmented reality postcards. So these, these virtual exhibits inspire people to attend the workshops and as they did so, we invited them to bring along their own objects and their own stories to be digitized. So they're digitised on site using photogrammetry and participants, they could engage with the process, learn about it, and oral history recordings were also gathered to accompany the objects. And the outcomes from these workshops are in the process of being added to an online archive built for the Nomad project using the Universal Viewer. And if you would like to find out more about this project, um, try the HoloLens experience or see the augmented reality postcards, we are in the Chaucer room with demos. So we'd like to finish by showing a short video um, of the mixed reality experience. Nomadic Somali people walk great distances, never staying in one place for too long. With each move, they take all their belongings with them, their animals, their possessions, even their homes. Imagine you had to carry all your belongings with you. What would you take? We would like to invite you to spend some time with a nomadic family to see the objects and hear the songs which are part of their everyday lives. To find out more about these and other Somali objects, please visit nomad-project.co.uk Thank you. So, um, I'd like to now announce the winner of the artistic category. Um, and this was a, a, a piece that was um, you know, unanimously agreed to be the, the winner um, in, in this case. And we're delighted to announce that the winner is um, Another Intelligent Sings. So, thank you so much, British Library, for the award. Uh, we are Rose, Rob, and Amanda. And our project, Another Intelligence Sings, is an audio tactile immersive installation that invites you to experience the biological sounds of our planet as recounted through an AI. Through this project, what we were really interested in exploring was how to use emerging technology with the archive in order to create an alternative composition of Earth's songs. The piece premiered at uh, the V&A's Digital Design Weekend 2018 as part of London Design Festival. And it was here that we exhibited it to over 22,000 visitors. Following the weekend, we were invited by Open Cell, who are London's newly opened bioart and biodesign studio and exhibition space to be part permanently showcased on their site. And it's now open for visitors to experience every weekend. But it was thanks to the breadth of the British Library Wildlife and Environmental Sounds Archive that we've been able to take a cross-section of the natural world from primordial physical phenomena to the great beasts of the savannah to the songbirds of the British countryside.
when the natural world is recorded, it is quantized for the human ear uh, to wavelengths within our perception and time frames within our conception. Yet, the machine learning algorithm sits outside the human sensorium and outside the human lifespan. An algorithm is agnostic to the source and intention and the time scale of data. Here, hopefully, is a clip of the sound piece. very non-human. Um, the soundscape is created using two different neural networks, WaveNet and EnSynth. Uh, we trained WaveNet, which is Google's most advanced human speech synthesis neural network, on many hours of field recordings, uh, including the BL's archive. Um, EnSynth is an augmented version of WaveNet that was built and trained by Magenta, a, sub uh, a creative lab like this, but Google's one. Uh, NSynth creates sounds that are not simply a crossfade or a blend, but something genuinely new based on the algorithm's perceived formal musical qualities of the source sounds. Uh, this was used to create mixtures between specific sounds, for example, sea lions meet mosquitoes, uh, leopards meet horses, and mealworms meet the ocean. Another intelligence sings reorient reorientates the algorithm's focus away from the human expression of individual thought and towards an amalgam of geological and biological processes. This creates an experience which enables humans to mediate on the myriad intelligences around us and beyond us and expand our view of might, what might be perceived as intelligent. Another intelligence sings takes digital archive content and makes it into a tactile, sensuous and playful experience. By making the archive material an experiential encounter, we were able to encourage listeners to enter into a world where they could be immersed and engaged in the data. Soft tactile materials such as hair and <coughs> foam invited people to enter into and interact with the work. In particular, we found that the playful nature of the materials in the piece meant that children were keen to experience the work and listen to the soundscape, thereby extending the audience of the archive material to one that it may not usually reach. So thanks once again to the British Library for this award. By addressing the need for experiential, visual and poetic encounters with AI, another intelligence things goes beyond the conceptual and engages people in the technology which is so rapidly transforming society. We hope this work shows how the creative application of AI opens up new possibilities in the field of archivology from being a tool of categorization to becoming a means of expanding the cultural role of the library in the future. Thank you.